Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody, and, and happy 4th of July. We give God glory and honor for another day. This is the day that the Lord has made. We are rejoicing and we are glad in it. If you don't mind somebody honk your horns or clap your hands or make some noise or do something, amen, let us know you're here, you're alive, you're well. Amen. Same thing for you wherever you are. If you're at home watching virtually, come on and give God praise and glory. We may not be able to hear you, amen, but in the spirit, amen, we can sense you. So go ahead and give God glory and honor, amen, as we come together and honor him together today. We thank the Lord for the day. America celebrates 245 years of being uh, an independent nation, and so we celebrate that today as God has given us our independence, amen, when he freed us from the sin, amen, that had us bound. So we're thanking God. Come on, whatever you need from the Lord, we're going to pray right now. And no matter how difficult the situation, no matter what the problem, our God is able to solve them. So let's pray together, seek the Lord together, and let's have a fabulous time in worship. Uh, and no, if you don't mind, before we pray, why don't you share? Amen. Share this with somebody else. Do us a favor. That's the greatest thing you can do as, as an observer is to share this with someone else. Put it on your timeline. Somebody may go through. I'm not going to say somebody may need it because all of us need the word. Hallelujah. We all need to hear from heaven. So why don't you go and do that for us as we're outside enjoying the open air and giving God praise and glory. All right. Share. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Father God, in Jesus name, we thank you today for your many full blessings. We thank you for another day, another 4th of July, Lord God. You didn't have to do it, but you did. And so we are so grateful to you, Lord, that you woke us up this morning and started us on our way. So glad to be back out here in the parking lot with the beautiful weather. Thank you, God, for even as we hear the birds sing and we watch them flying, understanding and knowing that they know their place in this universe, God, their place, hallelujah, under the open heaven, knowing that there's an honor and worship, God, for everything bows to your glory. God, for the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. And we thank you, Lord God, for uh, just bringing us back out to Rockstone Church, this praise in the parking lot service. Thank you for being here at 10 o'clock a.m. with us, oh God. We know that you're going to anoint us and strengthen us. Father, I pray for the word of God that will go forth on today, that you can anoint it and strengthen it, God, that it will do what you have, amen, set it forth to do. It will not come back to your void. God, I pray for every person, every, every man and woman, boy and girl in this parking lot. I pray for everyone that will ride up and down the streets of Main Street and Stone Mountain. I pray for those that are in their houses, amen, in complexes that we may not see, but that can hear uh, my voice, God, not saying what I want to say, but saying what you have commanded me to say. So, God, I pray now, let, let my mind, hallelujah, be focused on you. Let my heart be open to what you will say. God, not my will, but thine will be done. We'll do it your way. Say it your way, God. Use us as a vessel. Hallelujah. Empty us out, God, so that we can be full again with you. So, Father, let your spirit move. Let it rest, rule, and abide. God, that may have come, those that may have come here sick, amen, those that may have come and are watching us not feeling well, those that may have come, amen, not knowing what tomorrow is going to bring, confused, upset, bewildered. God, we lead them to you, for you are the author and the finisher of our faith. So God, right now, let every song be sung to your glory. Let every note be played to your glory. Let every hallelujah word that I preach be done for the edification of your people, God. We thank you right now. Now, God, amen, continue to heal us. Get us through this COVID-19, God, as you're moving us through. Bless us as we transition, God, amen, continually in person. Lord, I pray for our nation. I pray for our leadership and president. And God, most of all, I pray for the salvation of your people, God. We repent to come back to you. And just as we celebrate our independence as a nation, we celebrate our independence as a people of God, knowing what you've done, God, and whom the Son sets free is free indeed. So, Father, we thank you. We'll give you glory. And you know we are today, Lord. We're free to give you honor. Free to lift our hands. Free to worship you. And that's what we're going to do. In the precious name that is above every name. Amen. Bind every enemy. Bind every spirit that's not like you. And God, give us victory. In Jesus' name we pray. Let the people of God say, Amen. If you don't mind, let me hear you. Make some noise and honor the Lord right now. Hallelujah. As we continue on. Happy 4th. Amen. And enjoy your worship today. Was slain, he's alive. 
Jesus this morning. Hallelujah. Anybody know that he's alive today? Hallelujah. Anybody know that our God is alive? Hallelujah. We give him all the praise, all the glory, all the honor. They say, where would I be without him? Hallelujah. Where would I be without Jesus? Hallelujah. But today, because he is alive, I have freedom. I have deliverance. Hallelujah. Everything I need, I find in Jesus because he is alive. Somebody, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good this morning. Hallelujah. Blessed is the man that trusted in him. Come on and put your hands together in the parking lot and on Facebook and give God some praise. Hallelujah.
feel like fighting on. Amen. It, it's time for a little fellowship outside. Look at somebody and say, you fight on. Tell them, don't you give up. It might get tough. It might get rough. You might be challenged. Let me rephrase that. You will be challenged. But anybody up to the challenge, hallelujah, knowing that the race is not given, given to the swift, neither to the strong, but to them that will endure to the end. So tell them, fight on. Through your sickness, fight on. Through your troubles, fight on. Through your disappointments, fight on. Holler, through your difficulties, fight on. I dare to look at three people tell them, fight on, fight on. You, you don't know, you're encouraging somebody right now. Amen. If you don't mind, come on, move around just a little bit. You can still be distant and be safe. But you ought to let them know, tell them, fight on. You don't know who you go got ministry to. I'm looking at somebody saying, fight on. Amen. Fight in your marriage. Fight for your children. Fight on your job. Fight for your career. Fight for your home. Fight on. Most of all, fight the good fight of faith. Tell them you fight on. Tell them you fight on. Don't you give up. I'm telling you right now, Facebook, don't you give up. I know it may seem difficult. Listen, I understand that trouble comes to everybody. All of us have a fight. All of us have a struggle. All of us have some issues. Everybody, amen. Not one person that you know is not going through one thing or the other. Either you're in a storm, just came out of a storm, or heading for a storm. But I want to declare this word to you today. You fight on. Put your sword in your hand, which is the word of God. Hold it close to you and say, I'm going to fight on. Hallelujah. Hey, Jordan River, chilly and cold. Chill my body, but it won't chill my soul. Is there anybody that feels like giving God praise? This is old school hour. You can open up your mouth. Shout. Give him glory. You fight on. Hallelujah. Put that sword in your hand and you fight on. You fight on. You fight on. Listen, don't give up. Don't let go. Don't throw in the towel. You can make it. I believe the Lord had you oh God, look at this broadcast today for no other purpose but to let you know you can make it. On this Independence Day, amen, you are independent, amen, from your, amen, losses. You're independent of that mentality that you can't make it. You're independent of what the enemy wants to do in your life. You've got victory in Jesus, our Savior, forever. And I want to tell you one more time, you fight on. Now somebody, give the Lord a praise like you're going to fight on. Come on. Come on. I, I, I said a praise like you're going to fight on. You might be tired. You might be struggling. You might be going through. But I want to tell you right now, God will give you the strength to fight on. You want to know how I can fight on? Because I know that the battle is not mine, but it is the Lord. He's going to win it. He's going to give me victory. He's going to open up doors. He's going to make a way. He'll never fail me. He's undefeated. Hallelujah. Somebody shout, hallelujah. Come on, you fight on. <laughs> I feel it in my spirit. Why? Because there are times I feel like giving up. I feel like saying, what is the point? What is the use? They're coming against me. Fighting on every side. I'm down. I'm out. I feel like there's no hope. But then I remind myself that God is available, that God is there, that there is no weapons formed against me that shall be able to prosper. And something stirs me up. That's why we got to keep coming to church, y'all. That's why we got, because when the enemy gets you by yourself, in your house, on your job, in your office, isolated, sometimes you feel like you can't make it. But when you come together with the people of God and your brother and your sister tells you to fight on something on the inside, begins to work on the outside. And you can say, I can make it. Somebody say, I can make it. Come on, tell look at somebody say, I can make it. 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 Tell them, I can make it. You fight on. <laughs> Woo, hallelujah. We thank God for you being here today. As we celebrate independence, what a wonderful song to sing on Independence Day. Because guess what? Freedom isn't free. Independence doesn't come without a fight. Somebody had to fight for you to be here today to praise God on Main Street. Somebody had to fight and keep on fighting. So how long shall we fight, preacher? How long shall we fight on? I'm going to tell you how long, until the victory is won. Until the battle is over. Until victory is won. Fight on.
And guess what? Don't you be weary in your well-doing. Don't you be weary in your well-doing. For in your due season, somebody say due season. Somebody say due season. That means there's a timing to this. There's an end. Look, I come to tell somebody there's an ending to your struggle. There's an ending to your, oh God, child. There's an ending to any misery. Amen. Trouble don't last always. But what will last is the God that we serve. Trouble won't last, but the word will stand forever. Trouble won't last, but our eternity with him will. Amen. Fight on because he's going to give you the victory. Hallelujah. Hold on just a little while. I know your grip is slipping, but hold on. Independence is yours. Victory is yours. And most of all, the Lord our God, he belongs to you. Fight on. Hallelujah. I'm excited today on Independence Day to tell somebody you can keep on fighting. And when all your strength is gone, Paul said it like this, that, amen, his strength is perfect in my weakness. That when my strength is gone, he picks me up. Do I have a witness here that when my strength is gone, he picked me up? When I was ready to give up, has anybody ever thrown in the towel and God threw the towel back at you? Say, so you don't give up. You don't give in. For I will never leave you nor forsake you. And if I be for you, I'm more than the world. I wish I had a sanctified witness. I wish I had somebody that knew something about the Lord. I need somebody to get a little bit more excited on this Independence Day. Because I've been free from sin. Free from losing. Free from destruction. Free from my own self. And I'm going to fight on. Hallelujah. And you know what? I'm not going to wait till the battle is over. I said, I'm not going to wait till the battle is over. I, I, I said, let me talk over here. I'm not going to wait till the battle is over. Do I have a witness on this side of the parking lot? I said, I'm not going to wait till the battle because I'm in a battle. I'm not going to front. I'm in a battle. But over here, I said, I'm not going to wait till the battle is over. Guess when I'm going to shout? I don't hear you. Hey, man, Facebook, talk to me. I'm not going to wait till the battle is over. But I'm going to shout when? Right now. Somebody. Honor the Lord with your praise right now in the middle of your battle. Confuse the enemy. Blow his mind. He don't know what to do. He said, I thought I had him. I thought I rolled the stone right in front of him. But they fight on. Mother, fight on. My brother, fight on. My sister, fight on. Hallelujah. Young child, fight on. You fight on. I'm going to make it personal. You fight. And you know what? Before I close, just take your finger, point it at yourself. And if you are to talk to say, you fight on. Come on, tell yourself. I can tell you all day long. I can minister all day long. But until you get it in your spirit, that I can fight on. Hallelujah, I can go on. You fight on. Hey Amen. We bring you greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We thank God for you being here with us as we celebrate again the 245th uh, birthday of this nation as we celebrate what God has done amen as this nation is a nation under God there are still those in America that will believe and trust in the name of the Lord amen so we know she's still strong not because of our military might she's still strong not because of our intellect not because of our technology but because there are people in America that still call on the name of the Lord and his name is Jesus Christ for those who don't know he is the amen way he is the truth and the life he is the foundation that we're built on and as long as we got King Jesus we don't need nobody else hallelujah so we thank God in the celebration and we celebrate with you we welcome all visitors and friends to this parking lot amen we see good friends here we are so glad to have you here Amen. And we thank God for those that are visiting via Facebook. Again, we love you. We, we are glad to have you. Keep on joining us Sunday mornings at 10 o'clock during the summer hours as we honor God, as we praise and worship him because he is worthy to be praised. As we continue to do more and more in person, amen, it's about that time for us how to continue to transition in. God has been good to us, amen, and he has kept us even through this pandemic and he's been faithful. Do I have a witness that God has been faithful? He's a faithful God. Hallelujah. I, I'm going to tell you what. I've given up myself more than hallelujah than I can count. But God has never given up on me. He's been there every time that I've needed him. He's believed and told me that I can make it when I didn't believe it. And so I'm going to fight on. And I declare to you that if you fight this battle, you will win. If you fight it with the Lord. How do I know? Because victory is his. Hallelujah. The Lord causes us to triumph. That's what his word says. And if his word says it, guess what? It 
is so. Somebody say amen. 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 It is so. So we thank you for joining us today. Again, we welcome you. Uh, it is now time for us to worship the Lord with our tithing, offering, our gifts. Also to give announcements. Somebody give God some real praise for the opportunity to give. Hallelujah. Giving is such an important part of worship because it is the opportunity for us. The Lord said, give and it shall be given what? back to you. So we know the blessings of the Lord, they are mine. He's no favorites. He has no favorites, God. If you give, he'll give it back. He said, if you do the right thing, won't I bless you too? And the answer is absolutely yes. So God, we thank you today. Uh, if you want to give, you can give with on our cash app, dollar sign, Rockstone Church, dollar sign, Rockstone Church, dollar sign, Rockstone Church. You can give cash app. If you want to go to the website instead, absolutely fine. www.rockstonechurch.org, rockstonechurch.org. There's a donations page. You can give. It gives you the text number. It gives you the information for Tithe LY, which is a program we use that you can give, set up. Listen, you can even set up automatic payments. You don't have to worry about it. You can give your 10% and your offering, set it up so that it comes right out on a monthly, weekly, or amen, or even daily basis. However you want to set it up, you can go there, amen. Texting, you put it in one time and then you can go to your phone. We all love the text, right? We all keep these phones with us. You can text that number and give the amount. Simple as that. So take advantage of these easy ways to give, and I know you will be blessed. Amen. It's so good to be here on another Lord's Day. We can, uh, we're can outside, so we can smell the cookouts beginning. We can see the people getting ready to go back and forth. We're near Stone Mountain Park. It's right behind us. So we can see people getting excited about the festivities. But you know what? I'm excited about Jesus. I'm excited about what he's done for us. Is there anybody that's excited about the Lord Jesus Christ? So while others are excited about everything, I'm excited about him. So we welcome you to service. We're going to give you a few announcements as you get your gifts together. Uh, and you may say, well, Pastor, what about those that want to mail in a gift? That is all right with us. 781 Main Street, Stone Mountain, Georgia, 30083. 781 Main Street, Stone Mountain, Georgia, 30083. And you can mail your contributions in and we will utilize them in the right way. Giving to individuals, helping people in need. And doing what the Lord says. Hallelujah. Our announcements are as follows. Immediately following service today. Amen. Give us a little time to set up. But we want to come and just have some food fellowship. Uh, and some fun today. I know many of you are going to see some fireworks tonight. But we're going to make sure you're gone way before then. So you can enjoy wherever it is you're going. Uh, but we want to come together and just have some food fellowship and, and fun. Uh, we're doing it the right way. Uh, we know how to, amen, socially do it now. We, we've been in this for a while. So we're going to just enjoy each other. But I want to see your smiling faces. I want you to stay here with us. Uh, we've got food prepared, uh, being prepared for you. Uh, we're going to, amen, bless you. And so be with us today. And we're just going to smile and have a good time, laugh, hear some music. And just, just have a good time for just a little bit. And then you'll be able to go the rest of your day and enjoy whatever it is you want to do on the 4th of July. We just want you to be a part of what we're doing. And then you can do, amen, you have time to do anything else you want to do. So we say, amen, let's celebrate right after service today. Again, that's going to be uh, right at 1230. So give us a little time from the end of service to get started. So, uh, you know, stay with us. Enjoy. Fellowship. Talk. Have a good time. We thank God for you. And don't forget on uh, this Wednesday, we've got our 7 o'clock p.m. Bible study. We call it the midweek study at The Rock. Uh, we are having a fantastic time. 7 o'clock on Facebook. Join us Friday night at 7. Our conversations with God. So let us come together and pray and talk and seek God's face. If you have a prayer request, you can certainly email us at rockstonechurch at outlook.com. And we will take those requests, give them up to the Lord, pray for him, pray for you, amen, whoever you may be, pray for whatever it is you have going on in your life. And we're just praying to God for you, amen, working together, knowing that God hears our prayer, answers every cry and every groan. So that's Friday at 7 o'clock. Uh, PM. All right. And then next Sunday again, 10 o'clock a.m. Back here, parking lot of Rockstone Church. Again, as we get ready to transition, we're going further and further and closer and closer to, to in person. Amen. We're already in person. You're here. But the in person inside worship. Uh, the last couple of weeks we were inside. Amen. Because of the weather. But as we continue to go forward, amen, I, I believe the time is approaching us. Uh, and we, let's just keep praying for uh, this, this uh, you know, situation with coronavirus. We seems like we're right in the middle. We don't know really what's happening. There's a new variant going on, so we don't really know what to do with it. So uh, we just pray that you continue to make wise decisions for your health, uh, wise decisions uh, concerning vaccinations, wise decisions 
a verse of, you know, based on community, especially as we get closer to our children going back to school. So let's do what's right for each other, and we love you so very, very much, all right? All minds clear. Uh, those are all of our announcements. Take those gifts, amen. Uh, you say, well, I've already given online. That's okay. Take that phone, put it in your hand, laptop, put it in your hand, all that. Yeah, then we're going to consecrate it and give it back to the Lord. Father God, in Jesus' name, we thank you for every gift, every giver. God, knowing that we can't beat you giving, no matter how hard we try, for the more we give, you will give it back to us. So God, there is no trickery. There's no magic. It's simply promises that you've declared in your word. You said, prove me here and in see. If I won't open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, you'd have run receive. So God, I don't go on magic. I go on your word. And your word is true. You've never failed. David said, I once was young, now I'm old. But I have not seen the righteous forsaken, nor seed begging bread. So God, today we thank you. We trust you through all of this. Protect our jobs. Open up doors resources, entrepreneurial opportunities. And God bless Rockstone Church. God, we're still looking for that, that gift that blows our mind, God, that gets us to where we need to go. God, there's some things we have in mind, some things we're looking at. And Lord, we can't do it without money. But Lord, we need your help. We need you to touch somebody's heart. We need, amen, that gift of gifts. Lord God, we're going to trust you to hold on and, and give the testimony that it had not been for the Lord on our side, where would we be? So God, we thank you and we trust you right now. In Jesus' name we pray. Let every heart say amen. Thank you so much for being here again. We welcome everybody here. We got one more selection after that. We're going to bring you the word of the living God. And amen. After that, we go fellowship, have some fun together. And again, happy 4th of July, everybody.
Now the song says, do what you are famous for. Shut the mouths of lions. Now, my question is, we know what he's done in the word, but my question to you is, what has he done for you? What has he done in your life? Amen. He didn't stop performing miracles with Daniel and the lions then. He didn't stop performing miracles when it came down to Abraham and Sarah having a baby. He didn't stop performing miracles because of the blind man receiving his sight or the lame beginning to walk. He's still performing miracles today. Now, my question is, has anybody seen God perform a miracle? I can't hear you. Has anybody seen God perform a miracle? Then what I need for somebody to do is not be so cool, not to be so sophisticated, but to actually act like God has done something great in your life. Because you know I love the phrase, an incredible God deserves an incredible praise. Just for about 30 seconds, I need somebody to lose your mind real quick and give God praise for the miraculous things he has done for you. If you've seen God move, act like it and let somebody, let these folk know, born up and down. Say, what's wrong with these folk? You can say, we're not drunk as you suppose. We got a right to give God glory and praise and honor because he's been good to us. He's made ways for us. He's opened up doors for us. Somebody, everybody give God glory in this parking lot. And let's go, God, give honor to the Lord our God. He's a great God. He's a mighty God. He's an awesome God. He's a wonderful God. He's a kind God. He's a powerful God. He's a miracle worker. He's a burden bearer. Heavy load sharer. Won't he do it? You ought to look at somebody and say, I've seen him work. I seen them do it. Amen. How do I know? Because I'm a miracle. Where are my miracles at right here? You know you should be dead. No, you should be gone. No, you should be sick. No, you should be somewhere else. No, you don't deserve what you have. Know that if it had not been for the Lord who was on your side, you wouldn't be here today. Open your mouth, give God praise. A little bit louder. Open up your mouth and give God praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lift the Savior up. Lift the Savior up. Hallelujah. In the open heaven, open seasons. Let them hear you from Main Street down at the, oh God, please, God, please say. Let them hear you down on Rockbridge Road. Let them hear you right now, Facebook. Let the neighbor hear you. You ought to be shouting right now saying, if it had not been for the Lord who was on my side. I said, if it had not been, I wonder how I made it over. Wonder how I made it out. Then I have to wonder that far. I know that God is good. God is great. God has opened up doors. God has made ways. And do I have a witness yet? I'm looking for a witness. Is there any witnesses? A sanctified witness. Is there a witness? A living witness. I am a living testimony. I am a living testimony. Where are my living testimonies? I'm a living epistle. I'm a living proof. That God is able. I'm a living proof. That won't he do it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Won't he do it. Won't he make a way. Come on y'all respond. Won't he make a way. Won't he open up a door. Won't he keep you in your right mind. Won't he heal your body. Won't he give you joy and sorrow. Hope for tomorrow. Won't he make a way. Somebody shout hallelujah. Amen. I'm going to message y'all. But amen. I believe in the goodness of the Lord. David declared the best. He said, I would have fainted. I would have given up except I believe to see the goodness of the Lord and the land of the living. Can I be honest with you guys? The only way I'm still here is still smiling because I believe in seeing the goodness of the Lord. I believe in seeing God's goodness while I'm alive. I believe in what the Lord's going to do for us and for you and for everyone that calls upon his name. Hallelujah. Hey man, we've seen him work. We've seen him move mountains. We've seen him declare things in our lives. You keep on declaring. You keep on trusting and believing. And you know what? Watch God work for you. Say to God, it is an honor. It is a privilege for us to be here. Don't take it for granted. You being here today, don't take it for granted that you are here. But you ought to say, I'm here by the grace of God. Oh, I can say, I'm here by the grace of God. We learned last week that his grace is sufficient. It's more than enough. It'll take care of what we need. And I'm back here by the grace of God. No goodness of my own. No good driving of my own. I didn't keep the enemy out. I didn't keep the sickness away. But it was God. Amen. We've had reports even this week how God has protected members of the congregation from car accidents. 
We've got, amen, healing reports that has been coming in. Don't tell me what the Lord can't do. He's a, he's a miracle worker. And you think I'm going to sit back and not give him praise and glory? Look, we cried when we needed help. We ought to praise when we say thank you. Thank you for all that you have done. Amen. You say, what are you thankful for? So many things. There's an old song that says, so many wonderful things about Jesus. So many wonderful things about him. Amen. Turn with us as we go forward in the word of God to Galatians chapter 5. Galatians chapter 5. Again, we honor the Lord today. We thank God for you all being with us. Uh, as we uh, won't be before you long today, we are coming again out of the book of Galatians chapter number 5. Familiar passage of scripture. But what we want to make sure that we understand on today. Remember, the scripture is like a wonderful, amen, a wonderful layered book. And every time we get one part, then the Lord allows to read it again and it layers. It gives us a greater level of understanding. And so we are grateful today. Hallelujah. Galatians chapter number five. We're going to begin reading at verse number one. Verse number one for those who have your notes. Galatians chapter number five. Beginning with verse number one, we'll read uh, the first six verses. Then we'll skip down to verse 13 through 17 and end it on verse 25. Again, one through six, 13 through 17. And then ultimately, we're going to end on verse number 25. The word of the Lord reads like this. It says, stand fast, therefore, in the liberty by which Christ has made us free. Do not be entangled again with a yoke of bondage. Indeed, I, Paul, say to you that if you become circumcised, Christ will profit you nothing. And I testify again to every man who becomes circumcised that he is a debtor to keep the whole law. You have become estranged from Christ. You who attempt to be justified by law. You have fallen from grace. For we through the spirit eagerly wait for the hope of righteousness by faith. For in Christ Jesus neither circumcision nor uncircumcision avails anything. But faith working through what? Love. Say it again. Through what? Love. Through love. Let's skip down to verse number 13. It says, for you, brethren, have been called to liberty. Only do not use liberty as an opportunity for the flesh, but through love serve one another. For all the law is fulfilled in one word, even in this, you shall what? Love your neighbor as yourself. But if you bite and devour one another, beware lest you be consumed by one another. I say, then walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh for the flesh lust against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary to one another so that you do not do the things that you wish. Let's go to verse number 25. If we live in the spirit, let us also walk in the spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking one another, envying one another. Saints of God today, we have a very simple sermon. Hopefully easy to understand, easy to grasp, and hopefully easy, or not easy, but uh, clear enough for you to apply. The message today is simply this, free to serve. Free to serve. Somebody open up your mouth and say, I'm free to serve. I'm free to serve. Father, our God, in Jesus' name, deliver your word as you see fit. These are your people. Have your way. God, give me strength, clarity, understanding, and the anointing to perform this task. God, there are spirits right now that don't want this word to go forth. But God, now be a fence all around me. Cover me, amen, from the crown of my head to the sole of my feet that I can deliver your word, God. Fight this battle for me. Amen. Help me, Lord God, to do what you say. Let me hear from heaven. And God, if you were to interject, God, allow my spirit to pick it up. Say what you say. Do what you do, Lord God. This is not about me, my study, my intellect. It's all about what you want to say to your people. For God, your word is true. Your word prepares us for what's coming. It reminds us of what has been. 
and it gives us hope, oh God, that tomorrow will be what you say it will be. For your word will always accomplish that which you sent it forth to accomplish. So we honor you, we magnify you, we praise you. Let people hear, set them free, deliver them, and save them. And God, help us to be transformed by the renewing of our minds. In the precious name of Jesus, we pray. Let every heart say, amen. Amen. We thank God again for you being here today as we honor Independence Day. Again, 245 years, this nation has stood as a nation of freedom, a nation of, uh, you know, under God. One nation, what? Under God indivisible a nation that was supposedly set up so that we can have religious freedom freedom for others to exercise their religious choices freedom for those that would come amen in need hallelujah a different start we know that this country has had several difficulties when it comes down to freedom for everybody but one thing i want to declare as we talk about freedom is that freedom is not free freedom is at times difficult to come by freedom is not always easy to keep sometimes we talk about freedom and i believe we take amen we take advantage or we are not uh you know, we don't honor the fact that we have certain freedoms we take it for granted and i want to tell you today that freedom is something that you ought to celebrate celebrate freedom for the nation you live in celebrate as many problems as America has, you name me a country you would rather be a part of. As many difficulties as we have, we're still able to come into the house of the Lord. Still able to magnify the name of the Lord. And you guys still have a right, a vote. So we go through all these things that we're dealing with now in America and the legislations that are being uh, you know, sent forth to be passed. Those congressmen and women that you are sending to office to serve. Guess what? Your Christian vote matters just as much as a secular vote. So don't forget, you have authority and power. But we sometimes take that for granted and we don't stand and do what we need to be done. But let me tell you something right now. When you talk about freedom and independence, Day, it ought to you know, turn something on in your mind. Remind yourself that this freedom that I have, somebody died for it. It is difficult. One, it's difficult to achieve and it's certainly difficult to continue and so as we continue amen in this nation in this vein i want to let you guys know that you ought to stand up don't take your freedoms for granted don't take amen your ability to speak up for granted don't let everybody speak for us let the church of the lord speak up the bible says it like this let the redeemed of the lord say so sometimes i believe church we've been too quiet amen we've allowed certain things to happen under our watch we need to cry loud, open up our voices like a what? Trumpet in Zion. Let people know that we're here. The church is here. Pandemic couldn't kill it. Legislation won't kill it. The enemy won't kill it. As a matter of fact, you know one of my favorite scriptures that this church is built upon. Upon this rock, I will build my church. The gates of hell will not prevail. They certainly have been knocking against the church. The gates of hell have certainly been pushing against the church. You and I have had difficulties, and we will continue to. But there's one thing I want you to know before you get into this fight is that victory is already ours. I don't know how the Lord's going to do everything. I don't know how he's going to bring us through. I don't know how he's going to change it around. But all I have is a promise, and that is enough for me. Do I have any witnesses that, Lord, as long as you made a promise, that's enough? The just shall live by faith. We live in a generation now where we've got to know who he is. We've got to know him by his name and know that he's a rewarder of them that what diligently seek him. As we talk about freedom today, the freedom, of course, that I want to discuss for us is the freedom that we have in Christ. Because freedom brings with it responsibility. Freedom brings with it responsibility. See, you just can't be free to do whatever it is you want to do. 
That's part of what we're struggling with now in America. We're free, but sometimes those freedoms causes us to do things that really are unseen, unseemly. It seems like, why do you have a right to, amen, do that or say that? But you got to be careful with the balance. Because once you start restricting and taking away, then the enemy, of course, doesn't know how to be balanced. And he'll try to take away other things as well. But you got to realize, saints of God, that with freedom, there is a responsibility. And amen, in your spiritual walk with the Lord, yes, we are free. His blood frees us. His power frees us. He's given us victory over death, hell, and the grave. His grace is sufficient. We have, amen, we're not saved by our works. We're not saved by what we've done. We're not saved by who we are. But we're saved by grace. Yes, yes. The unmerited favor of God. Yes, God. The power to help us along our journey. So God makes it clear that salvation is not something that you have done. Because if it was you, you would boast. You know how we are. We would brag. As a matter of fact, if salvation was up to us, we might try to sell it. Try to make money. All You know, we try to amen, monetize everything. We try to monetize salvation. It happened in the word. Yeah, it happened in the word. Somebody said, put it in the bottle. Yeah, if you could put salvation in the bottle, sell it. You know how we are now. Amen. We'll sell it to the highest bidder. We'll wait till a pandemic and we'll sell it for twice as much. Just like we do in our entrepreneurial. You would think when times get tough that people would, amen, lower the prices. But when times get tough, houses are going crazy. You buy a house now, it's double what it was worth, it seems. You would think during times of difficulty that you would help people get in a house. But that's not how capitalism works. It's the law of supply and demand. We understand these things and how they operate. But that's why I love God. Because God is different. That's why he's holy. He doesn't operate like everybody else. He doesn't cause you or ask you for something that, amen, you don't have. He does not want you to do something you cannot do. He does not differentiate. He does not separate. He does not exclude you. God, being who he is, welcomes us all. And as we think about freedom and the freedom we have in our lives, in our spirit, the, what we got to be careful is as we deal with freedom in Christ, that we understand the balance. We understand why we are free. You know, part of the problem when people are free is you got to understand what to do with your freedom. Has anybody ever, amen, had freedom? And you finally got out of mom and dad's house. You figured I'm free. I can do what I want to do. Do you recognize you better be careful with the things that you do? Because there could be a time where you're going to wish that you were back in your mama's house. Freedom is something that is difficult at times. How do I know? Because if you recall the children of Israel, after the Lord freed them from their slavery... If you remember when things got difficult, what did they do? They complained against Moses and Moses. At least back in Egypt, we had the onions, we had food, we had water to drink. We were taken care of. If you're not careful, if you don't know what to do with your freedom, you can find yourself back into bondage again. That's why when we pick up Paul, as Paul is talking to the Galatian church, Paul was well received by the Galatians. They looked at him as an angel of God. They respected and honored Paul. You can see that in Galatians chapter number four. The churches that he established here had become strong churches. Believers of God. Remember, Paul had the difficulty now of moving the church into the era where the Jews now had to get out of their thought that you could be saved by the law. Paul's difficulty was, now I'm introducing to you to the, what? Dispensation of grace. I'm the apostle of grace. It is for by grace that you will be saved. He had a sect of individuals called the Judaizers. Judaizers were those that taught. You gotta be careful, saints of God, because this is not just new today. We've got all kind of religious sects today. Amen. And we have people that won't just deny Christ, but they'll try to add something to Christ. They'll try to act like Christ is not the way. He's a way, but he's not the way. But I want to declare at the sound of my voice.
That is not scripture. That is not the word that I believe that Jesus Christ is the way. And for those of us that are believers in God, amen, I'm not saying you have to believe in Jesus Christ. But what I am saying, that if you do believe in Jesus, then it takes away the option for you to act like, yeah, I believe in Jesus, but it's okay for you to believe in that and believe in that and believe in that. I'm not here to argue anything. I'm here to state what the word of God clearly states, that he is the way. The Judaizers, though, were Jews who had come in now. As with anything, when you've got a good, solid church, you better look for the Judaizers to come on in. When you've got people that's praising and magnifying God, I don't want you to think that you're going to just be left alone. Sometimes I think, church, we limit our own growth because we don't want certain characters to come in. But when you're doing the work for the Lord, you know the enemy is there to try to disrupt you, to try to dissuade you. He's there to try to complicate the matter. Man, we got a good church. Why did they have to come and mess it up? They didn't come and mess up anything. When the enemy comes, you got to give him over to the Lord. The Lord said, I'm able to fight the battle. I'm able to take care of it. So when the Judaizers came in, their thought process was, listen, uh, we know you got Jesus Christ. And, and we understand that salvation is in him. But you've got to add on what? You've got to add on to circumcision. You've got to add on the Jewish law in order to be saved. Remember, circumcision was uh, with the Jewish law. It was a covenant of the Jewish nation with God. But now we know that when God ripped the veil from the top down to the bottom, God opened up the door to the Gentiles to come into the house. God did not put the law. Remember, the law ended after Jesus Christ. You no longer could be saved by following the law. But you were saved by the grace of the almighty God. Uh, there's nothing greater than this salvation of Jesus Christ. Christianity, amen, Paul uses sound doctrine. Scripture shows how Christianity and Jesus Christ is better than the law. What the law could not do and that it was weak in the flesh. Jesus Christ came and with his blood set us free. Somebody ought to be glad because it took his blood to set us free. You and I are not sitting here free in our spirit because we want to be, because we just desire to be. I don't care how much you desire to be a millionaire. You've got to have the mechanisms to get there. Do I have a witness in the house? Amen. I want to have, amen. I look at people like, Lord, I'd like to have 200 million too. But just because I want it doesn't mean that I'm going to have it. I've got to have a processor. I've got to have something open up. I've got to have an open door. And you and I, no matter how much we want salvation, no matter how much we wanted to get out of the sin that we were in, we didn't have a way until Jesus Christ, he made a way out of no way. I've seen him move mountains. How? Because the greatest mountain he's moved in my life is the mountain of sin. The mountain of destruction. I wish I had a witness out in this parking lot. I had to can't help it and he made a way for me. Paul, as he talks in chapter 5 here, he begins to, amen, say, amen, talk to his people, the Galatians. And what I love is he starts off in chapter 5 is something that is, amen, it, it really, if you read the word of God, that some of the most fundamental parts of scripture will blow your mind if you think about them conceptually. Listen, it says, stand fast, therefore, in the liberty by which Christ has made us free. Hold on, stand there in the liberty by which he's made us free. And do not be entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Can I be honest with you? Paul starts off by simply saying, he's made us free so that we can actually be free. Yes. See, that, that, that right there seems like a simple concept, but you got to recognize why has somebody set you free? You got to realize what, what, what is it in it for you? Amen. When you set us free, when you let us go, what, what are you wanting back? What is the cost? When somebody, amen, lets you go in a relationship, sometimes you got to wonder what, what's, what's going on, what's, what's going to happen. Somebody, amen, sets you free, you got to realize, and especially with somebody that, amen, that when you were bound, hallelujah, the enemy had us bound, and the Lord freed us. And you may have to ask yourself, Lord, why did you free me? Why do I have this freedom? It's because he wants you to actually live free. He wants you to be able to actually have a choice. God gave you and I the volitional ability to choose. To choose right, choose wrong, up, down, in or out. The enemy does not want you choosing. He wants you to simply do what he says. He wants you to follow orders. It's amazing how we get caught up into the church and acting like the church is a place where all the rules are. 
But can I be honest with you? When you really go back through life, the enemy is the one that wants you following orders. He doesn't want you to think for yourself. He doesn't want you to think freely. That's why we live in a nation now that amen, those that want you to tolerate what they do are so intolerant of you. Because they don't want to, amen, to follow your rule. They want you to follow theirs. And if you don't follow theirs, we live in a nation of cancel culture. If you don't do what I say, how I say it, if you don't subscribe to my page, if you don't like my opinion, then I'm going to cancel you out. I'll delete you. I will get a whole bunch of folk and we'll come against you. That's why, saints of God, you cannot go for the popular opinion. You cannot worry about who likes your page because I guarantee you there are more people that see your page than that like your page when you're talking about the Lord. You cannot get caught up. And the Lord is, is continuing to teach me this. Amen. Sometimes we get on our page and say, God, why aren't there more people viewing? Why aren't there more people looking at it? And you'd be surprised. There are more people looking at it than you would imagine. But not everybody is going to like it because the enemy is not going to give you the satisfaction to know that you've been effective. So I'm telling you here, church, you fight on. Keep your sword in your hand. Keep your amen feet to the plow and fight on whether you know it or not somebody is being affected somebody is listening somebody is watching just because they don't have it on your social media page i found out when i say something stupid more people respond than when i say something profound sometimes i say something like oh but that, whoa, that was profound and you get about three likes you get on there and trip over a branch and make fun of yourself you get a thousand likes i'm watching people the, the greatest amen those with tiktok you wonder how did they get where they were? Were they doing something silly, something strange? But if you get on there and, and talk about the goodness of the Lord, you're not going to find but so many. Why? Because we live in that generation where we like foolishness rather than profoundness, uh, which I had a witness in the house of the Lord. Paul, as he was talking to this Galatian church, was letting them know he set you free so you can be free. He set you free so that you don't have to be entangled again. I want to tell somebody here today, no, you do not have to be entangled with sin again. No, you do not have to go back into your old lifestyle. I'm not saying that you won't be pulled back. I'm not saying that you won't have people trying to move you back. I'm not saying you won't be tempted. You absolutely know that you will be tempted. You know there will be, amen, when you put it down, somebody else will pick it back up. Things that you put to a side will, amen, people you put away will call you out of the blue. So you will have opportunity, but the Bible wants you to know that, amen, it's clear that when I've set you free, that you don't have, remember, you've got choice. So God is not going to make you do right. God is not going to make you come to church. you got to actually get in the car yourself. God is not waking you up and flying you to church on my first class and putting you in the parking lot and watching you serve him and picking you back up and making you go home, closing the door, telling you how to dress, straightening you up. No, no. Those are things that you and I have to do. But God wants you to know. He said, what I have done. Is I've given the freedom to you so that you can make the decision. I, I hope somebody's getting this because, amen, as we declare independence on the 4th of July, I want you to know that you and I have our own spiritual 4th of July where we can declare, amen, and guess what? We already have, amen, our own type of constitution. We already have our regulations and rules. We already have, amen, our copy, uh, the New Testament that tells us, amen, by his stripes, we are healed. It tells us that we're the head and not the tail. It tells us that we are a chosen generation, a peculiar people. It tells us that we will win and not be defeated. I already have what God says and how he feels and what he's doing. So I want you to know right now that this may be simple, but if you don't get it, you, amen, you don't understand that you don't have to fall back into the same trap. You say, well, Pastor, how can I not fall back? You are not the same as you used to be. Before, when you were trapped, you didn't have the power of God in your life. You didn't have the Holy Spirit working in you. You didn't have the promises of God that you weren't recognizing his promises. So I am not the same as I was. It may be the same temptation, but when they come knock at my door this time, they're going to find out that I've got an older brother. I've got Jesus. Who's at, anybody, when the, the enemy, amen, knocks at your door, you let the Lord Jesus Christ answer for you because you need some help. We can't do this by ourselves. Somebody say hallelujah. 
So as we go, Paul begins to tell them, amen, as he deals with the Judaizers, he deals with those that wants the people of God in Galatia to, you know, he wants them to do what? Say, listen, Jesus Christ is good, but let's add something to it. Let's give you something else to follow. Paul was confident that the Galatians would reject this false teaching. Amen, amen. And that he was responsible for teaching what was that is accountable, which is good. As a matter of fact, Paul says, amen, they're even trying to accuse me. Uh, they will lie on you if they can't get you. Do I have a witness in the house? When they can't find something on you, they will simply lie on you. That's why you got to be careful. Amen. You got to count it all, John. When you suffer for righteousness sake, saints of God, if they can't find dirt on you, we live in a time where they will create it, put it out there. Because what I found out is that people are much quicker to believe mess than they are. Amen. Truth. They are much quicker to believe that you did it. But amen. Don't we live in a nation now where we used to think it was innocent until proven guilty? Well, I found out. That it seems like we are guilty until we prove innocent. And if you watch, amen, how they put the stories out there, your downfall is put on the front page. The retraction is put way back in the back where nobody sees it. So you got to understand, Paul said they even tried to lie. Don't y'all worry about it. Don't you worry about the Judaizers. Don't you worry about them. There is nothing else that you need outside of Christ to set you free. Amen. Paul said, amen, stand fast. Hold on in the freedom by which he's made us free. Don't you be and look at somebody and say, don't be entangled again. Don't, don't go back there. Tell them, don't go back there. I, am I, look, I've seen you when you were back there. Amen. Amen. I know you when you were messed up. Amen. I know what you was like when you was drunk. I know what you was like when you was high. I know what you was like when you had evil in your eyes. I know what you was like when you was cheating on your wife. I know what you was like when you was, amen, cheating on a child. I know what you was like when you held weaponry. I know what you were like, amen, when you drove too fast. I know what you were like when your temper got the best of you. I know what you were like, but I come to tell you that since you've been in Jesus Christ, amen, if he sets you free, you are free indeed, and you don't have to be that man or woman anymore. Is it Anybody glad I don't have to be them anymore? He said, if you are circumcised, and again, he begins to say, listen, let me tell you something. If you're circumcised or not, it profits you nothing. Because your circumcision, you following the letter of the law, is not what saves you. So, amen, I want you to know right now, you can do everything you think is good. You can do everything, amen, jot, you know, look, dot every I, cross every T, but that is not what saves you. Now, if you are saved, of course you will try to do the right thing, but it's not because you are so righteous, hallelujah, that you are saved. You are saved by the grace of God. And he says, you have now come estranged from Christ. Amen. If you attempt to justify, he said, if you're going to try to do one thing, you got to try to do everything. If you're going to try to, amen, tell me to do one thing. That's why Rockstone, I try to tell you guys, be careful when we try to do laws. Don't do this. Don't do that. Put on this. Put on that. Because it becomes an impossible task to try to legislate righteousness. You cannot legislate righteousness, especially since people come from different backgrounds, different socioeconomic statuses. They come from different parts of the country. Amen. Some people wear one thing and it's okay somebody else wear another thing you got different body types you got different individuals you got all kind of stuff so when you try to tell somebody this is right or wrong and you try to go through a list that's why you got to understand listen let me introduce you to Jesus Christ and let Jesus Christ be the one that will touch your heart and mind my job is to preach the gospel the good news of Jesus Christ and amen the more I preach about Jesus and the more he begins to change your mind the more you think more about his kingdom and less about you I don't have to tell you about putting this on taking this off don't go here don't go there don't drink this don't do that why because at the end of the day i'm gonna tell you not to do not to do not to do but amen instead of telling you what not to do i'd rather tell you about the one who's able to set you free the one that is able to give you life and life in abundance because i found out that in life i'm always going to choose the better option and so my job is to make sure i let you know rockstone church i let you know facebook that jesus christ is still the better option he said i have come that you might have life and that you might have it in abundance. Somebody ought to get excited with me and shout, hallelujah. The enemy is trying to make us feel like, hey, amen, we got to do this, we got to do that. That's not God. God is not the one. He said, I have not come to condemn the world, but that the world through me might have life. He did not come to give you a bunch of rules because we cannot follow all the rules. We cannot get it. The law showed us that, but he said, if you follow me, he said, come and follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. Come on the Lord's side. Amen. Amen. Taste of my goodness. Walk by the Spirit, and you will not 
satisfy the lust of the flesh. You really want to know how to, amen, live right? You got to walk after the spirit and not after your flesh. You got to get beyond how you, oh, help me, Holy Ghost. You got to get beyond how you feel, what you used to do, what people have done to you, and you got to walk after the spirit, amen. And God said, if you walk after the spirit, amen, he said, you will not be conceited, provoking one another or envying. If you walk after the spirit, he'll show you how to live right. You trying to live right based on your own goodness, trying to elevate yourself based on titles and positions, trying to make yourself seem important. But can I be honest with you? Jesus said, the greatest of all of these is the servant. If you want to be big, look at somebody say, if you want to be big, learn how to serve. Hey, I'm looking for somebody that wants to be real. If you want to be real big at Rockstone, you want a title, you want position, you want a pat on the back, learn how to serve somebody. Learn how to get up out of your bed and pray for somebody. Learn how to help somebody that needs groceries. Learn how to help somebody that needs to cross the street. Learn how to get up and open a door for somebody. Learn how to clean the church. Learn how to take care of the parking lot. Learn how to cut the grass. Learn how to say, do you need something? Do I have a servant in this parking lot? Oh, don't get, look, I, look, I know you're ready. Look, give me a few minutes and I'm going to close it out. Amen. Paul tells him here. He said, don't you be caught up in the things that you can do because Christ is the one that set you free. That's why all the glory. Somebody say all the glory. Ah, oh, God, why is it important that you know that Christ set you free? You won't give the glory to your pastor. You won't give the glory to your mama or your daddy. You won't give the glory to a government official. But when I think of what the Lord has done, all the glory goes to God. So when I come to church and I lift my hand, I don't lift it because I feel great. I don't lift it because, amen, that's my favorite song. But I lift it because when I think of his goodness and all that he's done, my soul cries out, all the glory belongs to you, oh God. All of the honor belongs to you, oh God. And I'm going to give him what he asks for. And Paul tells us here, he says, hallelujah for it, Christ. Don't worry about circumcision or uncircumcision. He said right now, hallelujah, he said, but faith working through love. Faith working through love. If you say you got faith, you better show me some love. Amen. If you say you got faith in Jesus Christ, you don't have to, you know what, you don't have to convince me you got faith. I'm like James. Amen. Show me your faith by what you do. Show me your faith by how you love me. Amen. If you walk by me and don't help me. Amen. If you walk by me and you see me down and you don't lend me a helping hand. If you see me struggling trying to get stuff together and you don't come and say, Pastor, can I help you? You don't have to tell me you got faith, but I'm going to look at your faith and say, inactive faith is not faith at all. How can you say that preacher because James said faith without works is I can't hear y'all y'all quiet outside faith without works is what how many of y'all got dead faith? I don't need you saying, Pastor, I'll pray for you. I don't need you. Now, I need you to pray for me. I don't need you just to stop there. I don't need you to stop and say, Rockstone, amen, I got you on my mind. I need somebody to show up in the parking lot to lift up your holy hand. I need somebody willing to go into their pocket and contribute to the ministry. I need somebody to say, Pastor, you don't have to go out, go for you. I need somebody to say, if the church is dirty, we'll clean it up. I need somebody, if you're hurting, that'll sit there beside you, may not say a word, but they'll sit there and just hum and sing or just be by your side. I need somebody who's not going to be faith and talk about the goodness of the Lord, but I need somebody who when I'm down and out in the dirt, when I'm messed up and muddy, when I've fallen short of the glory of God, I need somebody that's going to be willing to come by and say, I'm going to get dirty with you. I know I got on my white suit, but my white suit is only to show that if it had not been for the Lord uh, who was on my side, I wish I had somebody say the only reason I got the white suit on because I've been covered by the blood of Jesus. Let the strong help those uh, that are weak. Saints, we got to work this thing together. We cannot make this journey by ourselves. You might be an island, but I cannot live as an island. I got to have your help. Look at somebody say, I've got to have your help. Oh God, I feel this in my spirit. He says, amen, amen. If you got faith, let it work through love. You got to learn how to love and do something about your faith. And it to come down to verse number 13. Verse 13 begins to tell us, for you, brethren, have been called to liberty. Only don't use liberty as an opportunity for the flesh, but 
through love, oh my God, through love do what? Serve one. Look at somebody say, we got to serve one another. We got to serve. I know you don't like me sometimes. I know you think I'm beneath you. I know I don't have your education. I know I don't have your skill set. I know I don't have your money. You, amen, riding that nice ride. You living in that nice house. But guess what? We got to serve one another. Uh, if God could come down from glory uh, and take on the form of Jesus Christ. Uh, and Jesus Christ said, I didn't come to, amen, oh God, to be ministered to you. But I came to minister. I didn't come for y'all to, amen, look after me. But I came for those who needed somebody to look after them. I don't care what your position is. Uh, I feel like preaching for, do I have about a few minutes? Uh, I don't care how much you've done. I don't care how pretty or handsome you are. I don't care how much, I don't care if you're the CEO of the universe. Uh, it doesn't matter what your position is. Uh, you got to recognize that he said, I've called you. Thanks of the living God. If you're going to be a child of God, uh, amen, I'm glad that you got money. Good for you. Uh, may your tribe increase, but, but you got to learn how to serve. Uh, Jesus said, if I wash your feet, uh, amen, if the master can wash your feet, uh, then what's the problem with you washing one another's feet? Uh, I know some of y'all look and say, I ain't washing nobody's feet, uh, but you got to look at somebody and say, get over yourself. Uh, oh, I got to tell them, I know they're looking at you mean and nasty, uh, but look at them again and say, get over yourself. Uh, God can't use you if you're still in yourself. Uh, God can't use you if you won't get out. Uh, he said, amen, for all the law is fulfilled. Uh, in one word, he said, even this, that you shall love your neighbor as yourself. I, I'm, I'm trying to find somebody that'll talk, talk back to me. I, I meant to just talk to Facebook because they're getting quiet on me out here. You got to learn how to love your... See, Jesus said, y'all getting real deep. You're getting real complicated. You're trying to... See, some of y'all make Christianity harder than what it has to be. But God said, you can null it down into one thing. Love your neighbor as yourself. Uh, amen. If I have any married couples here today that have been through counseling sessions, uh, you better tell the truth. Say, pastor will tell you, your marriage will work if you do one thing. Amen. Those that are, amen, engaged... Uh, those that are thinking about marriage, uh, those that are in your relationship, uh, if there's one thing that you will do that will make sure that your marriage will shine, say, well, Pastor, what is that? Uh, amen. I'm getting ready to write a book. You don't have to write a book on it. Uh, the book has already been written. It's called the Bible. Uh, uh, and oh God, I'm telling you one thing. If you would do for your wife uh, or your husband, uh, that which you would want them to do for you. Uh, if you would be concerned about their needs uh, above your, yeah, I see somebody else. Uh, that's fine as wine. Uh, yeah, I see a man that's big and strong. Uh, but when I think about tiptoeing out of my wife, uh, I think about tiptoeing out of my husband. Uh, I think about how I would feel uh, if they tiptoed out on me. Uh, oh, God, I wish I had a witness. When I think about buying something, uh, and I'm not going to consider how they feel, uh, I'm going to think about how I would feel. Uh, in other words, I'm going to love them uh, as I love myself. Uh, I wish I had somebody here to say, Mi Pastor, uh, is it that simple you got that right it's easy to tell you but it's difficult to do it's clear as a bell but when you do it it's like muddy like muddy waters but God said love your neighbor as yourself look at somebody say you gotta love me like you love yourself Oh, y'all not talking to me. Oh, y'all not talking to me out there. I, you know I can't come and find you. We got to stay on the camera. But if I can walk to somebody and look at them and say, love me like you love yourself. Oh, God has given me. And you say, Pastor, I, I don't know how to do it because I don't even like them. I don't know how to do it because they get on my last nerve. Oh, y'all know what I'm talking about. There's some people that get on your, not just one of your nerves, but your last nerves. It takes all the Holy Ghost you got not to smack them in the face. But God said, you know what? I want to tell you. He said, amen, you don't love me like you say you love me. Preacher, what you're talking about now? He said, if you can't love your brother who you see every single day, how can you love me whom you've never seen? So God said, you lying to me. You don't love me like you say you do. And God said, I can make you love me. But I will tell you right now, if you cannot love your brother and you can't love your sister, how can you love God? And God said, amen. He said, but all the laws fulfilled. He said, you love your neighbor as yourself. But if you bite and you devour one another, then, oh God, beware, you become consumed by one another. How many 
letting us know that if we keep on fighting and we keep on biting and we keep on backbiting and rolling our eyes and going against each other, not only are we going to bite one another, but we're going to devour one another. How many people say, I don't want to devour you. I don't want to bring you down. I don't want to destroy you because when it goes around, sure enough, comes back around. When I tell amen and get you in trouble, I got to watch my step. Oh, snitches get stitches. Oh, what are you talking about? You got to be careful when you're trying to bring somebody else down because don't worry, the time will come when you're going to look for somebody that you can talk to and those that go up and step on everybody when you come on back down, folk going to be glad to step back on you. I wish I had a witness. So you better try love. Try some kindness. Try to do it God's way. Ah, is there somebody to say hallelujah? And I'm going to give you these things and I'm going to close it out. Hallelujah. You say, well, Pastor, how do I do There's four things I want you to get, which is your key to service. And I'm going to let you go. Number one, you got to understand that this call to serve is not a suggestion. It was not God saying, well, let's think about doing it this way. Try doing it this way. It is God's mandate. Somebody say mandate. God did not say, okay, well, if you feel like it on a good day, he said it is something that you must. He said, the reason I have made you free is so that now you're free to serve somebody else. Now, the word serve is actually is another word dealing with a servant or enslaved. So when we. But in your freedom, you ought to now put yourself in a position where nobody see here. Remember, I told you, he said, I'm freeing you to be free. Free means I'm freeing you to make your own decisions and your own choices. Now, God says, when I free you, what I want you to do is put yourself in a position of servitude for somebody else to help them. Not because they made you, not because they told you to, not because they beat you with a whip, but because you want to help somebody. Oh, God, along the way, he said, this is not something that I'm asking you. He said, when God has given you freedom, your response is to serve. So I said, my response is to serve. Number two, it takes humility. Somebody say humility. Hallelujah. Yeah, Jesus said that the greatest in the kingdom will be the servant. You will not be able to serve in freedom without humility. It is impossible for you to serve people without humility. It is impossible for you to serve without thinking that yeah, man, you're not too big. You're not too smart. You're not too important. You're not too successful to serve those amen around you. Humility is the door that allows you to walk through and serve. Uh, if you're trying to serve somebody, you can't just get up one day and say, I'm going to learn how to serve. you got to humble yourself before the what? Mighty hand of God. Believers should not feel like you can't serve fellow believers. Jesus showed the example of servant leadership. Amen. By Jewish tradition, when he, amen, washed the feet, amen, any guest of arrival was a task that was done by the what? Lowliest of servants. In other words, you would take your servants and find the one that was at the bottom and they would be the one washing dirty nasty feet but Jesus said I'm going to show you when I say serve I want you to serve with humility it takes humility to serve somebody particularly when you think you are better oh can I talk to somebody especially when you think you're better than they are y'all got real quiet I might as well stop preaching and go to meddling now especially when you think you're better than somebody more educated like I ain't serving them I, I've got an MBA I, I'm sorry I've got my doctorate I'm not serving no they 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 barely they barely got a GED they didn't make high school hey amen I'm, I'm sorry I, can, I just got my nails done the other day I went there I got my pedicure my feet looking good I can't go and get muddy and I ain't washing nobody's feet I ain't taking nobody home I just got this new bins last week I ain't taking nobody home in my bins she don't smell right he don't smell right hey amen clean up the church baby I ain't cleaning up nobody's church I'm gonna come there, pay my tithes and offering, and I'm going to go home, clean up the parking lot. Man, I ain't serving nobody. I'm too good. Don't you realize that, amen, who I am? Don't you realize that I'm an attorney? Don't you realize I'm a doctor? Don't you realize that I'm the CEO? Don't you realize I'm a finance manager? Don't you realize that I'm a teacher, an educator? Don't you realize that I'm an entrepreneur? Don't you know who I am? I've got an important job in the city. Amen. You want me to come to this church and put a broom in my hand and get on my knees, and you want me to vacuum up? You want me to mop some floors? 
I know you didn't ask me to clean up no bathrooms. Uh, absolutely not. But I'm going to talk to somebody here that's humble enough to know that God, if you were, amen, humble enough, hallelujah, to leave your throne in glory, amen, the earth belongs to you. Everything is yours. You are God and God alone. If you were humble enough to come down here on this dirty, nasty earth, God, get your robe of white clean of my dirty with all my sins. You are, took on the sins of the world. If you were able to humble yourself, the Bible says he humbled himself even unto the death of the cross. If you were humble enough to die for something you didn't even do, if you were humble enough to set my soul free, what's the matter with me? I'm going to ask y'all a question. If God can do it, what's wrong with you? If Jesus could humble himself, what's well, matter of fact, some of y'all need to start washing some feet. Oh, I feel it in my spirit. Anybody feel a feet washing service coming on? Y'all don't hear me, but Rockstone, I feel like when we're ready to go back in the house, I feel a feet washing service coming on. Why? Because, amen, sometimes Jesus said you got to physically show. Amen, you got to come off your high horse. God said, it's why I can't use you. You're too busy. Everybody offends you. When you are humble, you don't get offended easily. When you are humble, it's not about, amen, what you get back in return, but it's about the kingdom of God. When you are humble, amen, you don't worry about doing, amen. Amen, if you don't want to do it, that's when you say, Lord, Amen. Now listen, don't say, Lord, humble me. Because there's only one way to be humbled. So I would, I would declare to you to humble yourself. That's why the Bible says, humble yourself. Before the mighty hand. Somebody say the mighty hand. Ah, uh, God, the mighty hand of God. Amen. Look at number three. Number three, you will have to yield to the spirit of God. If you're going to serve, you're going to have to yield to the spirit because you know why? It is absolutely, amen, 100% against your flesh to serve anybody. Amen. We have a hard time getting good service when we pay for it, don't we? We have a hard time. I mean, I go to certain fast food restaurants and I got a hard time getting good service. Amen. I'm there trying to give you money and you rushing me through. I don't know if y'all been there like I've been there. I can't even finish my order sometimes before they rushing me through. And I just want to go to the register and tell them, will you mind waiting on me? But you know, I don't like to mess with nobody that's messing with my food. So I take it because I don't want them playing in my food. Uh, but I want somebody here to know, amen, if you're going to serve, you're going to need the help of the spirit of the Lord. That's why the Bible talks about, amen, empowering us. I know many of you, hallelujah, help me. You got the Holy Ghost and it makes you what, jump? And it makes you want to shout. Well, sometimes, sometimes we got the Holy Ghost and we still don't jump and we still don't shout. Do I have a witness? Sometimes it takes the Holy Ghost plus an organ, the Holy Ghost plus some drums, the Holy Ghost plus me shouting, the Holy Ghost plus me rolling on the ground. Sometimes you sit there and watch. Keep on, Pastor. Keep on rolling on the ground. I think I'm going to feel it after a while. Keep on yelling and messing up your throat. And I think I'll feel it after a while. It takes the Holy Ghost plus the good music. It takes the Holy Ghost plus somebody watching you. It takes the Holy Ghost plus you practicing at the house to get you to shout. But I came to tell you the Holy Ghost doesn't just come to make you look good. It doesn't come to help you shout. But I want to know one of the greatest aspects of the Holy Ghost. It empowers you to serve. It lets you know, amen, if I'm going to be a servant, i got to have God on the inside because I'll be honest, I don't want to serve you. Amen. You talked about me. I ain't giving you nothing. Huh? Amen. You ran me down like a dirty dog. I ain't serving you nothing. Huh? But anybody ever had the Holy Ghost speak to you? Huh? It said, it doesn't matter what they did to you. Huh? You're serving because I am the Lord. Huh? Amen. you got to have the Spirit. That's why the Bible, when it goes on, huh? we've been given this Holy Holy Spirit to empower us. It's our comforter, our guide, our teacher. But being filled with the Spirit is not effective if you don't yield to Him. Somebody say, you've got to yield. That's what we say. That's what it is to be walking by the Spirit. Sometimes say, what does it mean, Pastor, to walk by the Spirit? It simply means to yield to His lead, to follow His influence, to do what He said. When you walk in the Spirit, it is opposite of resisting Him. So if you're going to serve somebody, you got to walk after the Spirit. And I guarantee you, I can tell if you're in the Spirit or not. I can tell if you know what God says or not. Amen. Because if you walk in the Spirit, your attitude will be different. How many of us got an attitude? this morning. Uh, an attitude last week. Uh, we don't want to serve. We don't. Nobody bother us. Uh, but when you walk after the Spirit, uh, you recognize I don't have time for attitude.
attitudes. Who am I to have an attitude against somebody? Have you ever asked yourself a question? Who am I to have an attitude with someone else? Who am I, amen, to have an attitude with somebody that's fallen? Who am I to judge somebody that's fallen short? Who am I to judge somebody having a bad day? I'm just like they are. Amen. I'm just like you are. But we all got to say, Lord, we got to follow after the spirit. I got to yield to what you say. That means sometimes I got to lift my head. That's the spirit. Sometimes you got to lift your hands anyway. I know you don't want to lift them. I know you don't want to give God a shout of praise. I know you got pain racking in your body. I know you're tired after working all week long. But sometimes you got to yield to the spirit. You got to tell your flesh, get back. I'm going to give God some praise. Is there anybody real quick? I'm going to yield to the spirit. I know it's warm outside. I know I had a long week. And it's the 4th of July. But this battle I will not lose. Oh God, this battle I won't fall short on. I will bless the Lord at all times. And his praise shall continually be in my mouth. Somebody shout yes. And listen, number four, and I'm going to close on this. Number four. We got to remember, if we're going to serve, that we're serving God and not just that person. I'm going to say it again. You're serving as unto the Lord. Now, we did this a couple of weeks ago, and the Lord has brought it right back. So whenever the Lord brings it right back, you need to listen. Like when the Bible says, verily, verily, I say unto you. That means listen up. Look at your neighbor and say, listen up. Look at your other neighbor that's going to look back at you and say, listen up. Listen up, I'm trying to give you keys, not just so we can come and have a good time, but so that you can live effectively for the kingdom of God. So you can go forth and do what God says. He says, when you serve, you got to understand, you've got to serve as unto the Lord and not man. Now, I saw a phrase that I love. It said, when we serve, we got to understand we need people less so that we can serve people more. Anybody ever heard the expression, less is more? Y'all don't know what it means, do you? Less is more. When we get to the point where we need people less, we can serve them more. Say, so what do you mean, preacher? I'm glad you asked me that question. Amen. When we go about it, think about this. When Paul was teaching the Christians, amen, he said we need to do what? Serve more and need less. In other words, I don't need your validation in order for me to serve you. I don't need your approval in order for me to serve you. I don't need for you to pat me on the back in order for me to serve you. I don't need for you to say good things about me in order for you to serve me. Why? Because, amen, if we don't understand this, amen, people will let you down. Anybody been let down by people before? Oh, y'all don't know that. Okay. Amen. People will let you down. They'll fail to appreciate you. They'll fail to, have you ever done something with somebody they didn't even thank you? You went out of your way and they didn't even say thanks. And you know what you did, don't you? You said, the last time I do that for you, you didn't even have the audacity or the manners to say thank you. God said, you didn't do it for them. If you did it for them, you're going to have your reward. But when you do it, you do it as unto the Lord. Remember, the Bible says that they can see your good works and glorify your Father, which is in heaven. Amen. God is trying to tell you, people will let you down. They'll fail to appreciate you. Amen. Amen. Why? Well, how can I get? Matter of fact, people will criticize you when you brought them a meal. They say, I wanted a steak. Oh, God. You bring them a steak. They say, I wanted chicken. You bring them five dollars. And what about ten? Have you ever tried to? bless somebody no matter what you did it wasn't enough and you say you ungrateful somebody amen I ain't doing another blessed thing for you but God said I want you to hold it for a second and recognize that what you do for them when you get to glory you're going to see amen treasures in heaven and you're going to wonder where did they come from he said the least that you've done to my little ones you've done it what also unto me somebody will say I'm doing it for the Lord uh, baby if I was serving out can I tell y'all Rockstone if I was preaching for just you guys I would have closed up shop a long time ago if I was out in this parking lot because y'all appreciated it I would have stopped the parking lot a long time ago if I would have served because I'm waiting for somebody to pat me on the back I would have folded up put my towel up and walked away and got a job paying myself twice
twice as much now. Amen. I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing right now if it was just because people said thank you. I wouldn't serve. You cannot serve based on people being grateful. Amen. You can't serve based on people patting you on the back. You can't serve based on people saying thank you. You got to serve because you know I'm serving as unto the Lord. The reason I do it because it's in my heart. The reason I'm helping you is not because of you. It's because I'm doing it as unto the Lord. One day I want to hear him say, well done. By working for Christ rather than people, we come better and not better. I wish I had a way that we become better and not better. Oh God, we become servants of the Lord and not other people. I'm nobody's slave, but I will become a man of servant. Amen. As unto the Lord. Amen. It may be paradoxical, but it's true. We don't need your good opinion. I don't need y'all to think great of me. Amen. I wish you would think good of me. I wish you would say good words about me. But can I be honest with you? When I do good, it's not because you do good back to me. Jesus said, amen. Pray for them. Amen. World God, pray for your enemies. Those that despitefully use you. Those that come against you. Don't you waste your time getting back at them. He said, for the battle is not yours, but it belongs to me. Is there somebody say, I serve because it's right. I serve because God said it. I serve because I'm trying to make it to heaven. I'm working out my own soul salvation with fear and with trembling. I wish I had somebody say, I ain't serving you because you deserved it. I ain't serving you because you've been nice to me. I ain't giving because you earned it. But I'm doing it as unto the Lord. And that well, when I need your opinion less, I can serve you more. Do you get what I'm saying? When I need your validation less, I can serve you more. When I need your pat on the back less, I can serve you more. Amen. Is there anybody here that says, I'm tired of pleasing people? I'm tired of trying to please everybody. But I've got one person. This is where I'm trying to get you to go. That instead of trying to please everybody, you say, I'm going to please just one somebody. I'm not going to please all the people, but I'm going to please the Lord. If you please the Lord, everything else will fall in the order. If you please the Lord, everything you need will be supplied. If you please the Lord, he'll make even your enemies to be at peace with you if you serve and please the Lord. No weapon formed shall prosper. Do I have a servant in the house of the Lord? I said, do I have a servant in the house? Listen, saints, I'm going to end with this story. When I was young, I remember vividly in Baltimore, we had a game. I was just a young lad. And it's one of those things that made an impression on me that I just couldn't forget. We played a game. It was called kickball. Y'all may not know what that is, but it's like baseball, but they roll the ball to you and you kick it as far as you could, hard as you could. My team was on the verge of winning. We were on the verge of finally beating the other squad. Unfortunately, it was my turn up. And when I say unfortunate, it's like everything laid on me. Everybody on my team had an opinion of what I should do. Some were saying, kick it over here. Some were saying, kick it over there. Some were saying, kick it up the middle. Some were saying, do this and that. Everybody. And at the same time, you know what everybody started doing? They started yelling and screaming about what they were because they wanted. The victory was in my hands or in my feet rather at the time. I had the authority and the power to do something about it, but yet I had the opinion of dozens of people. Now, in this case, you may look at your own lives. When the ball came my way, because I heard the voices of everybody and I wanted to please the entire team. Now, how can I please people that's telling me to do 12 to 15 different things? That is impossible. So you know what I did when the ball came? I kicked it right back to the pitcher the pitcher rolled it to the first baseman, and we were done. And you can imagine everybody on my team was like, man, you are a scrub. You a loser. Everybody was mad. Just one of those times when you walk back to the classroom by yourself. Because everybody was mad. Now, you know what I'm trying to get you to learn from that case? What I should have done was I should have thought about my strengths. I should have thought about what I did well. Which side 
I kicked the best to, and I should have listened to my coach. I should have listened to the one that had the authority to give me the advice that I should listen to. There's an expression that if you are a coach and you listen to the crowd, then very soon you're going to be part of the crowd. Do you hear what I'm telling you? God is letting us know today that there's going to be a whole lot of noise, amen, in your life. There's going to be a lot of people you're trying to please. But you cannot focus on pleasing everybody for everything. You cannot focus on trying to make everybody happy. You got to focus on the one that deserves the focus. Because if you please the one, then guess what? If I would have focused on my strength, if I would have focused on my coach, very happy. Look, the chances of me kicking it where it needed to go. So if I would have done the right thing and pleased the right one and focus in the right area, everything else would have been fine. Because all all they wanted to do was win. I'm trying to tell you in your lives right now, saints of God, amen, you've got to understand this. You've got to need people less and you've got to do what? You've got to serve them more. But in other words, you've got to seek the face of God and say, God, if I please you, then everything else will come into order. If I please you, then I don't have to worry about people because you got them. If I please you, I don't have to worry about my life because you got my life. If I please you, my decisions will be right. If I please you, then my actions will be right. If I please you, then my life will be right. Is there anybody understand what I'm saying? We're trying to please everybody and you cannot please a crowd, but learn how to please God and everything will be all right. Why am I free? God said you are free to serve. Everybody's standing. Our time is now gone. God said on this Independence Day, outside, even in this heat, He's letting us know that I freed you, not so you could just walk around free. I freed you not so you could just walk around and say, well, I'm free. I'm free. But there's a purpose to your freedom. There's a reason. He said that when I free you, you don't have to be bound anymore. When I free you, you don't have to walk around with your head hung down no more. When I free you, it's not like others. When I free you, I've got the authority and the power to do it. And if I set you free, you are free indeed. Y'all don't hear me. Why well, this is important? Because I know there's a struggle in each of our lives. And we feel like sometimes we don't have any choice but to do what they tell us to do. But I'm telling you right now, you got a choice. Jesus died for your choice. He gave it to you right here, right now. So no matter what others will say, I'd rather please Jesus. There's an old song that I'd rather have Jesus than silver and gold. Today, saints of God, he said, I freed you. On this Independence Day as we celebrate, I freed you to serve. I freed you to make a difference in somebody else's life. If we don't serve, who will? If we don't have compassion and concern for one another, saints of God, church, we are not meant to be by ourselves. But God has set up so that you and I can serve one another. We can help one another. And you know what? By the power that he's given me, I'm going to serve. Not because you've been so nice. Not because you didn't talk about me in your little huddles. Not because you didn't say things you shouldn't say. But because it is a commandment by God. He said, all the laws fulfilled in this, that you love your neighbor as yourself. So I'm coming here today and saying, saints, focus on the thing that is the most important. Stop trying to please everything and everybody. Serve because God has required it of you. When you please somebody, please God. If you please God, people are going to be just fine. Because you want to know why? Because when I do what the Lord says, it's always greater than what I wanted to do. I wanted to give you 10 bucks. But the Lord told me 25. I wanted to help you, amen, with bus fare. But the Lord said, oh God, get them with something more significant. You cannot be God giving. God wants to use some of us, all of us, for his purpose. If you're here today, you say, Pastor, I get it. I understand it. I need to serve. I'm free to serve. Sometimes we got to wonder as Christians, what are we here for? Because if it was just salvation, you would have got saved and he would have taken you to heaven. But he left you here for a purpose, to serve. And the Rockstone Church, we got to learn how to serve each other. 
from this point on, you don't have to wait to be served. You don't have to be invited to serve. We'll say, Pastor, I'll serve if, if y'all tell me what. No, make yourself available. Make yourself available to someone. Make yourself available to the church. Make yourself available to serve. Why? Because it is God's plan and God's way. Every need in the house is met. Because whatever we need in this church, God has already provided through you. Look at somebody say it's through you. Each one of you right now that I'm looking at has a different talent, a different skill, a different mindset. You are different, you got different finances. I've got different things I can learn from you. All of it. But guess what? It's got to come from you. Nobody can do it all. God didn't call that to be. He said, but I freed you to serve. So today, if you're here, and first of all, you don't know Jesus Christ as Lord. The first thing you got to do, because again, you can't serve without God's spirit really empowering you. Because your flesh is going to win every time because you don't have anything to yield to. But he said, I'll fill you with my spirit. So if you're here today and you've never given your life over, the first one you've got to yield to is God. God, I give you my life, my heart, my mind. Do what you say, do. I can do all things through Christ. Yes, I can. I believe the word. I trust the word. God said, if you believe that I am he who supplies your needs, came to save you, set you free. If you believe that I am the Lord, I'm God. I'm the Messiah. Have faith in my name. Hallelujah, hallelujah. You shall be saved. You repent of your sins. This means I'm turning away from the way I used to walk. I'm turning to you, God. I'm doing a 180. I'm turning around, changing direction, changing my course of action. And I'm walking towards you, Lord. Remember, walking in the spirit, I'm yielding to you. And God, I believe that you're able to do it. You're able to change my life, make it right, turn my darkness into light. If that's you, receive them right now. Repent of your sins. And you know what? The Lord said your next step is to be baptized in water in Jesus' name. We will virtually baptize you. We'll come to where you are. Technology, we have to use what we have to use. But if you're able to make it to Stone Mountain, you're able to make it to 781 Main Street, come on, we'll baptize you in person. We've done it. We've been doing it. Pandemic has not stopped baptism of salvation. Can't do it. Gates of hell won't prevail. Pandemics won't prevail. The kingdom of God will go forward. So that's you. Come on. Email us at rockstonechurch at outlook.com. Rockstonechurch at outlook.com. Amen. Come on, rockstonechurch at outlook.com. We're here for you. We're here for you. If you want to become a member of this church, email us. Put it in the comment section. Somebody to respond to you. Get back with you. Connect with us. We're here for you. Come on. Hallelujah. This is a different day. Rockstone in person and Rockstone Global. We're able to come together. So for the rest of us that are here, if you want to be the servant God wants you to be, lift your hands right now in the air. Right where you are at home too. Come on. Don't, don't be ashamed. Don't, don't be new. Don't worry about who's around you. They might say, what are you doing lifting your hands? I'm, I'm being obedient. I'm lifting my hands. I want to be the servant that God wants me to be because guess what? I've been free to serve. That's why I've been free. And I'm going to serve. And you know what? I'm going to serve as unto the Lord. Because if I serve as unto you, I'm not going to serve much. Because many of us, many of us is hard to serve, aren't we? Oh, y'all don't have to say amen. Many of us are hard to serve. It's difficult to serve y'all. It's difficult to serve us sometimes. But when I serve as unto the Lord, he's sweet, I know. Sweeter than the honey and the honeycomb. And after all that he's done for me, the least I can do is say thank you. Obey him. For obedience is better than sacrifice. Father God, in Jesus' name, we thank you for your people. I thank you for your word. I thank you for your truth. I thank you that you remind us as human beings we are here to serve. We're not here to be selfish. Me, myself, and I. To worry about what I have, I get mine, you get yours. But you made me a blessing to somebody. So God, if I really want to be rich, Lord God, let me serve. Because God, you'll give seed to the sower. God, if I want to have things, I got to be willing to give them away. A closed fist. Nothing gets out. Nothing gets in. But Lord, today, I need to be reminded and remind your people. 
The God of our focus on you, pleasing you. Needing people less so that I can serve them more. I appreciate you today, Lord. Make me that blessing. Open up my heart and my mind. God, help me not to have to wait for somebody to get me to serve. But Lord, I'm serving today because I heard your word. Oh God, I said I heard the word of God. And God, today I thank you because I'm going to be about my father's business. You came to serve. The apostles served. And God, we are to serve. This is not about titles. This is for everybody. Amen. The bishop does not get a chance to sit back and not serve. Amen. The pastor, the deacon, the missionary, the evangelist, the usher, the saint, the musician, choir member, praise team member, down to the old the custodian, groundskeeper, the visitor, amen, those who are partners, God, we all have a purpose to serve, all of us. If you serve Jesus and you are as high as it gets, then we have no excuse. You have called us to serve. So God, let us place it in our heart. Even when we got, the, Lord, even when we need to be served, we got to serve. Even when we're in pain, we got to be a wounded healer. Even when we're going through, God, we got to be those that are struggling but still helping somebody else. There is no excuse. There is no time off. God, what we have. As a matter of fact, God, what we have in us, God, you've placed it in us for somebody else. So when we don't serve, there's something that we need in the body that I'm holding to myself. So God, please bless me not to be selfish. Selfish with my skills, my body, my time. Do I not know that I am not my own? But I've been purchased with a price, the blood of Jesus. And so God, today I come to serve. And it is through service that I find my purpose. Many of us feel like, God, why am I here? What am I doing? Where do I go? What do I do? God said, start by serving. Serving the body of Christ. Serving your brothers and your sisters. And you'll find your purpose, definitely. And Father God, I thank you for those that are here today that heard this word. Those on Facebook that hear this word. Those that will hear it later. Recognize, God, we're not here to be pretty. We're not here to dance pretty. We're not here to show off. We're not here to show you, amen, how we can dance better than you. We're not here. God, for any form or fashion, but we're here to serve. Thank you, Lord, for the simplicity of the gospel. Jesus plus nothing is how we are saved. And we're freed from sin to serve. We thank you right now and we give you praise. And we give you glory and the honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Let every heart say, amen. Somebody, right quick as we close service, give God a praise. Serve the Lord with gladness. Open up your hearts and your minds. We love you. Praise God for you. We'll see you next time. Have a fantastic 4th of July. We'll see you next time. Peace be unto you. And peace be multiplied. In Jesus' name. Have a great week, everybody. God bless.